Father God, I thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to stand before you one more time, God. God, we're really present in this place, God. Thank you for the song that has been sung. Thank you for the word that has been read and prayer. Praise God. Right now, Father, we ask for that. Speak through me, God, despite me, God. There's no real preaching without you, the Holy Spirit. You're the preacher, I'm the vessel. And we have the ears like Jesus. Jesus said, if you got ears, use them to hear. Holy Spirit, give us an understanding of your preached word. Give us an understanding of this text that we've never seen before so that we might go out and have the courage to live the lives you called us to be in this dark and dying world. Let the world know that there is a Savior named Jesus Christ. I am not aware that someone today might be saved for the very first time or that someone today might be restored, some, some saint that's either been stubborn or, or, or backsliding, God, that they might be restored, they might turn around, God, and, 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 and partake in the sanctification process, God. Oh, Lord, we love you. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your mercy. A study that needs your strength. A prepare that needs your power. Lord, I'm ready and willing, but only you can make me able. The grass withers, the flower fades. The word of our God shall live forever. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Lord, you God. Bibles today. I want you to go through two portions of scripture, but both in the book of Romans, both in the book of Romans, Romans chapter 8 and Romans chapter 15. When we found that, please stand to your feet. Romans chapter 8, put your finger in chapter 15. I'm just going to read one verse out of each, amen. Romans chapter 8 and Romans chapter 15, amen, amen. If you stand to your feet, amen. Well, every week they sing songs that just, you know, that victory belongs to you. I started singing it all day at the house. You know, I, I was I was I was afraid that mine was gonna say, Dad, your turn. And I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready. I didn't get my key or nothing. I wasn't ready. But at home I'm ready, but I sound good. <laughs> so let that resonate in your spirit that victory belongs to Christ. Amen. Romans. Romans chapter uh, 8. If I receive this word, I receive this word with my mind going, my mind going it, will be dead for me. it will be dead for me. But if I receive this word, I receive this word with the spirit over my mind, the spirit over my mind it will be life for me. Right. And when your kingdom it becomes my priority, my priority. Its, impact its impact will be my reality. My reality. Lord, I don't need religious form of fashion. Lord. Life. Who's the mind say receive life? Mom say receive life. Me say receive life. Amen. Amen. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. I'm going to drop down to verse 20. What did I say? 26? 26. Romans 8, 26 says, Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we are. But the Spirit itself made an intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Go over to chapter 15, and uh, we'll drop down to verse 30. 15, 30, it says this. Now I beseech you, brethren, for the Lord Jesus Christ's sake, and for the love of the Spirit, that you strive together with me in your prayers to God for me. Amen. 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 I'm going to preach for just a few moments in your hearing. Um, what we find it hard to break. When, when, when we find it hard to break. Richard Dehan, he's a preacher and theologian. Richard Dehan, Dehan, however you pronounce his name, told of a soldier who was doing guard duty on the front line in World War uh, I. And after being relieved of duty as a Christian, he wanted to pray to thank God for protecting him and to ask 
for his continued protection. If you know anything about war, there's always somebody guarding the front line, kind of sound the alarm if the enemy is coming, and it's a dangerous spot. And so this young man as a Christian, he wanted to thank God for protecting him while he, after he got relieved, as he got relieved. And uh, he wanted to thank God for the continued protection while at war. But the enemy lines were very close, and uh, he didn't go far, so he just walked out a little way from where he had been standing all night, standing guard all night, and he knelt down and he began to pray aloud, right? And the soldier, the soldier who replaced him, uh, heard his voice and thought he was speaking to someone in the enemy lines, right? And so he reported him. He thought he was yelling stuff to people on the enemy lines and reporting him. The officer in charge grabbed him and said, man, you've been accused of revealing our secrets and our position to the enemy. How do you respond? And the soldier said, that's not true. I wasn't doing that. The officer replied, then what were you doing when you were out there facing the enemy and talking? Soldier said, I was praying. <laughs> you were praying out loud? Yeah, said the young soldier. I was, I was praying out loud. Then the officer said, then you show me right now. And so the young man knelt and began to pray. And when he finished praying, the officer dismissed the charges because he said, nobody can pray like that unless they've been practicing. Yeah. <laughs> I said, I, 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 don't, I can't pray. You ain't been practicing. Yeah. I, 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 can't, I can't pray. You ain't been, when you practice, you know how to pray. Yeah. Yeah. In my Christian life, I have found that prayer is a difficult discipline. Listen to me. It is a difficult discipline. Prayer is a difficult discipline. I, I, I agree with others that prayer moves through uh, different seasons, right? I, I agree with others that, that, that praying moves, let's say praying moves through different seasons in our lives. Uh, in different seasons, my posture might change. In different seasons, your prayer might change. Am I worried about it, right? There are different seasons of life where, you know, your posture changes. You used to say you little cute prayers, but then a season comes and you ask me to open the door so you can lay prostrate before the Lord. Seasons change, right? Uh, posture may change. Even your prayer, what you're praying for may change. But whatever season I am currently facing, my specific prayers are often marked by my experiences. Let me say it again. Your specific prayers, my specific prayers, are often marked by my experiences in life. If I'm doubting, here's an example. If I'm doubting, I pray for faith. Right? If I'm hurting, I pray for healing. If I'm confused, I pray for understanding. If I'm worried, I pray for calmness. If I'm restless, I pray for peace. If I'm afraid, I pray for comfort. If I lack wisdom, I ask God to give me discernment. Um, and this is the way we ought to pray. And if that's true for you, like it is for me, you and I are together in the difficult discipline of prayer. Prayer is a, di is a discipline. I know uh, we've been taught sometimes we pray and, and we just walk in. It's like throwing up a wish list. It's not. True prayer, prayer is a discipline. It's a discipline of prayer. And, and you know, I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm a saint, but I'm not often saintly when it comes to the fervency of prayer. Y'all follow me what I'm saying? Prayer is a lagging discipline that needs constant tightening up. Yes. Let me say that. Yes. Prayer is a lagging discipline yes. that you have to constantly tighten up. Yes. Huh? Somebody just called the junior and the all stars. That's not what I'm talking about. Yes. Would that be like, all right, those junior yes. and all stars? Yes. Tighten up. Okay, that's not what I'm talking about. Yes. I'm talking about your prayer life must be tightened up yes. every day. Let me, let me, how many times I got truckers here from down in uh, Brown? And anybody who, who drives with a heavy load? Every now and then, matter of fact, if I'm right about it, if I'm right about it, the test, when you take the test to get your CDL, it says that you should stop and pull over. All right. I'll get every 20 miles to kind of check the straps yeah. to make sure the load is secure. Yeah. That's called shoring up the load. Uh -huh. You better shore up your prayer line. Every day, every so often, you are full and tighten up the straps when it comes to my prayer life. Yeah. You ever get to the end of the day and say, oh my goodness, I didn't pray like I should. Yeah. Yeah. I pray for my food. 
and I was more concerned about the food than I was God to give the food. I'm just glad you that. You say you bring it, you're holding it on, thank you, thank you for the food. But why don't you, anyhow, but anyway, you have to shore up a prayer. Like prayer is a discipline. And I don't care how long you've been on the battlefield, I don't care how long you've been in church, I don't care how much Bible you know, you better discipline yourself in prayer. Prayer, prayer needs showing up. Prayer is a spiritual discipline that needs cultivation. The ground that needs to be turned over. That's what prayer does. Seeds of prayer need to be planted and watered. Seeds of prayer need that. We wait like a farmer, trusting the seed will sprout and multiply its blessing. Prayer takes effort and prayer takes constant fine tuning. If prayer is effortless, you may not be praying right. The Bible says we well, even when Jesus prayed, drops of blood came out of his forehead. Prayer is a discipline. We gotta learn how to pray. We gotta learn what not to say when we pray. Disciples don't ask Jesus, and disciples did not ask Jesus uh, to teach them to he said, teach us, teach us to pray. Not teach us how, teach us to pray. Not how to pray, but teach me to come. What's the difference there? Teach me to pray. I, I think I might know how, but teach me to do it. Teach me in this discipline. Give me a heart and a hunger for prayer. Teach me to pray. Teach me to pray. Give me a hunger for communion with you. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Lesson Luke 11, 1, Lord teaches us to pray. At one point, Paul commended Ephrath, uh, uh, Ephrathah in, in, uh, on his fervent prayer life. He commended him, right? His buddy, uh, uh, Ephrathah, right? He called him a fervent, he called him a servant that was in fervent prayer. Uh, he says, Ephrath greets you, always laboring fervently on your behalf in his prayers. That's Colossians 4, 12. I like to decipher, or uh, I like the descriptor that the apostle uses. He says, prayer is a needed struggle, and we have to learn to be fervent. Amen. Let me ask you, are you, and don't answer out loud, let me say to yourself, are you fervent in prayer, or are you just casual in prayer? I'm glad you pray. But, but, but now we've been on the back for a long time. It's 10 o'clock crowd. We're all the Christians for a minute now. Are you fervent in prayer? I woke up and I did my prayer life. I got my prayer walk on there. I got one of too, right? And sometimes it's more about the walk than it is the prayer. Uh, Y'all want me to stop right now, right? We're just doing the benediction. But we have to be fervent in prayer. How long do you want to be out there? I don't know how long I'll be because I'm going to be fervent in prayer. I might be out here for a minute, right? Uh, uh, you know, and so the Bible, you know, we, we read about a class and we, we don't even know what we should pray for as we ought. <sighs> Our prayers are oftentimes selfish, but the Spirit, and I'm glad Paul dealing with that Spirit, that Paul says, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for our groanings which cannot be uttered. In other words, you're praying for one thing, aloud. But there's a grooming on the inside that only the Holy Spirit himself can decipher. What you're praying for is rooted in something else. What you're praying for, thank you, Holy Spirit, is oftentimes rooted in something else that you keep Chris. Anybody, anybody, Lord, I'm trying to say something, and I don't know what I'm trying to say. The hope is that the Holy Spirit now, you make intercession on that groaning. It's not about what you said. It's about what's rooted in. What you said is rooted in something. And the Holy Spirit makes intercession for that. Y'all need to give God some praise, right? Because we don't even know what to pray for. We don't know what to pray for. Spirit himself makes intercession for us. And, and I'll talk about that more in a few minutes. Prayer, prayer, cornerstone, family, and friends is not a mood. Prayer is not a mood. Prayer is a lifeline. Prayer is a lifeline that is good and it must be chosen above our feelings. We love our feelings. Everyone tells you to be in touch with your feelings. It's so self-aware. My feelings, my feelings. Pray got to know above your feelings. You ought not say I didn't feel like praying. Pray got to go above your feelings. I can't pray right now because I'm upset. You better go above your feelings and get on your knees and make it with prayer. Prayer is not a mood. Prayer and prayer has to be chosen above our feelings. Sometimes we just have to, y'all, I don't, I don't want to say it like that. Sometimes you just got
got to do it until you feel like doing it. That's why I tell you 
thing that is so important when you pray, when you decide to enter the discipline of prayer, you got to turn your phone off, not only turn it off, put it in the other room. Yeah. Amen. Right? Put it in the other room. Put it in the other room. No service whatsoever. The other day, I was taking a nap, right, and my wife was home, and, and she took away all my electronics. So I wouldn't be disturbed. Amen. Matter of fact, she not only turned them off, she put them in the other room just in case iPhone or Samsung was trying to be sneaky and sneak a notification through. <laughs> It's the same thing with our prayer life, right? You got to turn off everything. You got to work. You got to be in the discipline of prayer. You got to get the dog bark, let it bark, let it bark. I got to be in the discipline of prayer. I got to get away. I'm working. I'm working. I, I have died to self. My flesh is warned against me. The outside is warned against me. The birds are warned against me. You ever start your prayer and then your mind goes somewhere else? All of that is work. Come on, somebody. Moreover, it's hard to pray because our focus is often praying. Uh, our focus is praying itself. It's nothing to do, and not God. Let me say it again. Sometimes our focus is the prayer itself, and not God. Right? That's that's something. That's, that's why we need our focus. Right? We learn a lot about prayer, not so that we might know a lot of facts about prayer. I don't care about the facts of prayer, but that I, I, I have to learn how to pray with focus on God. That's what prayer is. A lot of times we focus on the prayer and not on who we're praying to. Our focus must be on God the Father. By His solemn grace, we know Him. We know He is there. Am I right about it? We know that He hears, not only hears, but He listens. We know that He is not silent because He had a lot to say in His Word. We know He always answers our prayers and we know He always acts according with His perfect will for our ultimate good and His glory. Let me say that again. He answers every prayer. He just might not answer like you want Him to answer. No prayer goes unanswered. And God always acts not according to your will, but according to His perfect will. That's why your responsibility is to make sure your life is lining up according to what He has said in His Word. God didn't answer my prayer. Finish the sentence in my favor. But in reality, He did answer in your favor. No, no. He always answers your prayer in your faith because it's according to his will. And guess what his will brings about? His will brings about good for your life and glory to his name. That's what his perfect will brings about. Well, he answers your prayer. Prayer, prayer, prayer is not preparation for work on its own. Prayer is work. It's not a preparation for work. Prayer is work. Prayer is not preparation for the battle. Prayer is the battle. Prayer is the battle. Prayer, prayer is, is twofold. Definite asking and definite waiting to receive. That's what Oswald Chambers said. That's what prayer is. Prayer is time consuming. Prayer takes time. How much time do you pray? Don't answer. I can, I can give you the answer. I can give you the answer. Because sadly enough, the average pastor only prays 10 minutes a day. And you ain't no pastor. So you got to tell me how much you pray. Sadly enough, the best Christian among us Right? Forget preachers, but the, the most disciplined Christian you know, the average is only 10 minutes a day. You know why? Because it's work beyond that. It's work. Especially now, in this 21st century, how many distractions we got? Yeah. Huh? We got distractions all over the place. It takes time. I lock myself in my prayer closet for 10 minutes. Well, good for you. You just met the average. <laughs> You, you got an average prayer life. Congratulations. When will you have a prayer life that goes above average? When will you be involved in the disciplined battle of prayer? And it's in, within the disciplined battle of prayer that we see God move. It's within the discipline of prayer that we see God do the miraculous. If you spend more time praying and less time working, guess what? You would run the church up and something. I wish I had a witness that could testify prayer is emotionally consuming. Prayer is emotionally consuming. Prayer, where you are, I got a witness. Prayer will wear you out. You will sweat through your clothes. Huh? You got to get up and take a shower. What you do? I was praying. Too 
miles. I've been a workout. Crazy, mostly training. I wear this thing on my wrist called Whoop right now. I am about to do this, this one is. My wife's like, why? It monitors your heart rate, it monitors the workout that you do so you can burn. It hey, hey, got like the iPhone stuff too, right? And, and funny enough, I, mean, uh, I could be busting my tail in the weight room. And the thing said, I ain't did it. I'm sweating. I got a shower, I'm defending myself. Then there are times I pray and I get up and say, Yo, your heart rate was the one that is. Sometimes there, there, are, there are days where our mind 
mind is just grow tired, am I right? It happens. Well, we sometimes we're physically exhausted from work, right? Some of y'all put in manual labor all day long. Sometimes our children are possibility weakness due to a due to an illness, but a physical weakness is often connected to spiritual weakness. Can I say that again? A physical weakness is often connected to a spiritual weakness, though not always connected. Sometimes it is, right? When the body is weak and our, our minds can think our wrong thoughts about God. You ever you ever been weak in your body and think the wrong thoughts about God? You have. You to my saying that. Because you start saying, well, maybe the Lord, you know, don't want that for me. And his word says that he wants it for you. But you'll sit there and say, well, the Lord don't want that for me. No, you start thinking wrong thoughts about God. And your hearts uh, begin to believe things. And, and prayer time can become ineffective because our minds are distracted and often wander at, at times. And I, I know none of you this morning ever had this issue, but like I said before, I've caught myself on the sleep door in prayer, right? Just like the disciples. Some people say, I don't fall asleep on the prayer. Disciples did, did too. Uh, I, you know, and disciples did, they fell asleep. And sometimes, when, sometimes you ever wake up and you embarrass that you fell asleep? And you embarrassed before God, right? Somebody ever wake you up in church and you was embarrassed? Huh? Bop! That's what's all you get. Everybody online saw you do. Bop! Embarrassed! I'm embarrassed! I'm embarrassed! You know, and, and then, you know, Jesus had said the same thing to disciples. He said, Y'all wait here while I go pray. He comes back and his three, his inner circle of sleep. And what does he say? You couldn't watch for an hour? You couldn't watch for an hour? I know they weren't back. White and slob. I know they weren't back. So I pray, Lord, so before you pray, this is what you pray. Lord, strengthen my mind to pray. Yes. Strengthen my mind. Lord, I love pray. But Lord, Holy Spirit, I need you to strengthen my mind to pray. Yes. Remember that even simple prayers can be launching pads for effective fervent prayers to the Lord. Sometimes we are preach our, we approach our prayer in the wrong pattern. We spend time focusing on personal needs rather than addressing our Father who is in heaven. Now, uh, Jesus said, when you pray, you, you ought to start off like this. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. In other words, Jesus said, before you ever, you ever get started, you better understand that God is to be glorified. God is to be adored. That's hallowed be thy name. God is to be worshipped. I recognize he's my Father, and he's in heaven. Hallowed be your name. I, I adore you. I'm going to worship you. And following a pattern of prayer is helpful, and it keeps us from being distracted, or being distracted on a personal list. Because sometimes we go to God, and we just show up with bliss. Show bliss. I thank God for all prayer requests. I thank God for prayer and I thank God for all those things. But Jesus said, before you get to your list, I first of all, I know what you're going to pray for before you pray for But before you get to your list, you better understand that I need to be exalted. He said that in Matthew chapter 6. Then after exaltation, if you look at the outline, sins are confessed. You don't miss that part. Before I can pray for you, I've got to confess my sins before him. That's why I always say, you better talk to somebody who knows how to get a prayer through. Not everybody can get a prayer through. I, if, if, you're, if you're praying for me, and I notice your lifestyle hasn't changed, you ain't got a prayer through on my behalf. You feel crazy, I'm praying. You might as well just say to me, you're sending me good vibes. <laughs> Because you sure enough can't get a prayer for it. Because your life indicates you have yet to confess your sin and repent of your sin. So just tell me, Pastor, good vibes, you way you care about your sin. Good vibes. Don't really care about your sin vibes, right? You just send vibes to the vibe come out of his chest. I'm just being honest. I, I read that ridiculous stuff. Just, just, just say, I wish you well. Just, I don't receive good vibes. I need prayer. Y'all give God some praise when you pray. I don't want to get my The whole
whole world is full of vibrations. Say all of that. I'm a believer. And my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest train or a horoscope <laughs> or a personality indicator. Y'all know who am I talking about now? I, I, tell, I tell people, there's something out there called the, what's it called today? An anagram. Anagram, right? You take this anagram. Thing. I call that, that's, that's the Christian horoscope. My anagram says that I am a strong person. No, man, I don't know what the words say. I'm a believer. I dare not trust the people. But I totally need on Jesus. On Christ, on Christ, on Christ. Because all the rock I stand, all on the ground. Sink and sand. You got to come to a place in your life where nobody messes with you with that stuff. Yeah. I'm at that place. Nobody messes with me with that stuff. You got to come to that place where people say, oh my God, all we're going to do is talk about God. You dad going to like all we're going to talk about God. Yeah. You know, they don't go to the outside of another place. Yeah. Ergo season. What is Ergo season? Leo <laughs> season. Loser season. How about that? Let me shout, let me shout. Huh? Heard of those things. Don't be ashamed of yourself. Theo, come up here and sing. Go come up here and preach. All right, here we go. Let me get out of here. There, there, there are contemporary models that really teach you how to pray. When I was growing up a new Christian, and, and if you've been there, there's the Acts model when you pray. What do you mean the Acts model? A-C-T-S. When I first fall on my face, I give God adoration, then I confess my sins, that's the C. Then it's T, I get into Thanksgiving, and then it's S, supplications. That's where your prayer requests come in. When I first sit down to pray, Anthony, I adore God, I confess my sin, I thank God, we can get the opportunity to come to the throne, and then my supplication. Then I can pray about your need, then I can pray about my need, and it'll be heard, then I can pray about your deliverance and my deliverance, right? Um, let me share something with you that might challenge you. Some of the greatest prayers are in silence. How about that? Yes. Some of the greatest prayers are in silence. Some of, some of the greatest prayers that you ever had, I know some of my greatest prayers were words that never came out because the pain was too strong. They ended up being the most powerful prayers I've ever prayed. Words never even fell from my lips, but I thank God that the Holy Spirit that deciphers my throne. Understand that the heart can speak and God hears the prayers of the broken heart. That's what David tells me. Stop trying to numb all the pain with temporary things. Sometimes if it hurts, just learn to pray. Let it hurt and go pray. You ain't got nothing with no heat. You ain't got nothing with no drink or no pills. It hurt. I have a loss and it hurts. I had to shut something down and it hurt. I fell short and it hurt. Lord, it hurt and I'm coming to you. But my heart hurts and he does not feel that pain. Yes. Bible says, I will not despise a broken heart. Yes. You don't have to numb the pain. Yes. Take that pain to him. Yes. Take that pain to him. Yes. The hurts learn to pray. Be still for a moment. Turn, turn off the volume of everything outside. Be silent before the Lord. Allow your heart to speak to God. Concentrate on Him. Allow the Spirit to help you. Sometimes all I can say is, God, you know. Help me. God, you know. Help me. That's all I can say sometimes. Listen, it's not about the length of the prayer either, Lord. So it's about the heart of the prayer. It's not about the leg, it's about the heart. God understands and God weeps with you. Jesus identifies with our uh, situation. So allow your heart to speak and, and, and in powerful words to God and allow him to pour out his love into your broken life. I remember the Apostle Paul that said our holy scripture. He says, he says this right in scripture. He says, the spirit helps us in our weakness. Uh, we do not know what we ought to pray for. But the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. And he who searches our hearts and knows the mind of the Spirit, because the Spirit intercedes for God's people 
in accordance to the will of God. How amazing is the gift of the Holy Spirit, right? How amazing is that? He's better than technology. He's better than your Apple programming system. He's better than your Microsoft. He, he clearly communicates my thoughts and my desires in harmony with the Father's purposes. He said, listen, he, he, he clearly deciphers it. He deciphers what I want in, in accordance to the will of God and God's purposes. The work of the Holy Spirit not only makes my prayer work, that, but this intercession that also carries when my heart fails, he still carries it even when my heart fails. I gotta confess to y'all family, I've been wrong over the years about prayer and other things, other than once or twice, but I've been wrong about prayer. I, I mistakenly assume that knowing how to pray is a skill that should come automatically, but it does not work that way. It doesn't work that way, believers. Uh, someone is constantly, at, and I'm somebody, your pastor is somebody who's constantly grappling with grace, right? I'm constantly grappling with grace. I know that my prayer life is not something to be ashamed of. And I also know that my, my, my prayer life reflects a weakness in character that needs strength. And in other words, I know I need a stronger prayer life. I wrestle with God. I grapple with God. I know my prayer life got to be stronger. God said, if I did all of this with you, you pray a little bit. Imagine what I'm going to do with you when you learn how to say a whole lot. I may not be the 21st century psalmist, but I can pray faithfully. I can pray powerfully, even with my disjointed, distracted train of thought sometimes. If you can relate to this, I hope you don't feel guilty. I need you to know that God is listening. No matter how much you try, no matter what you try, no matter what's going on, God is listening. And if you pray right, if you don't feel like praying, you've got to pray anyhow. If you don't know how to pray. Don't worry. Don't worry. You can pray. You can learn to pray. When we believe in the power of God, that's why we pray. That's why I pray because I believe in the power of God. When we pray, we are reminded of who we are not. That's why I pray. When we pray, we are reminded that we are not God. When we pray, when we pray, God shows us the center of the universe and you and I are in it. That's why we pray. When we pray, we are reminded that we are not in control. That's why we pray. When we pray, we are reminded that God that means he can do what he wants to do, what he wants to do, whatever he wants to do. When we pray, we recognize that prayer is our daily and continually surrendering to God's control over our lives. That's what happens when you pray. When I was growing as a Christian in my early 20s, I started preaching when I was 25 years old. I decided, because it sounded good, that I would be a prayer warrior. It sounded good, but you forgot the word warrior is attached to it. You're not a warrior unless you do some fight. You ain't a warrior unless you had to cry sometimes. You ain't a warrior unless you got some stars. Huh? You ain't a warrior unless you've been beat once or twice. I said I wanted to be a prayer warrior. And someone who really knew God saw and, 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 and you know saw a lot from their prayers, they pulled me aside and said, listen, Grace, you made that declaration. Know now that you're in a fight. Know now what it means to be in a fight. But you're not going to fight this battle of standing up. You're going to have to learn to fight on your knees. You're going to have to learn to fight with a five-pound head. You're going to have to learn to fight with a broken heart. You're going to have to learn to pray for your tears. You're going to have to learn to pray for your pain. You're going to have to learn to pray for your own understanding. You're going to have to learn to pray for everybody to see your pain. You're going to have to learn to pray for your pain. You're going to have to learn to pray for your pain. And finally, after about 30 years, I finally know what it takes to pray. Took me 30 years. Huh? Yeah. It means under heavy load. Be steadfast. Even 
though the load is heavy, even though the, the load is to the contrary, even though the load is pressing you down, you got to keep on pressing in spite of the heavy load. You got to keep on pressing in spite of the heavy load. Christ Himself possessed this. He, uh, he, he possessed a steadfast endurance, and he, he, he showed us a perseverance during His earthly life and ministry, and He enables those of us who trust in him. He gives us access. He gives us access to learn how to persevere in prayer. How do I know? Because Hebrews 12, 1 and 2 says this. Hebrews 12 says, therefore, since you are surrounded by so great cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin that clings to us closely. And let us run with endurance. Somebody say endurance. Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Looking to Jesus. Not looking to the finish line. But looking to Jesus. Not looking at my neighbor. But looking to Jesus. Not looking at Fox News and CNN. But looking to Jesus. Not that I got nothing on that stuff. Looking to Jesus. Why? Because he is the author and finisher of 